I'll try to keep this short and sweet. I, male 26, have been with my girlfriend 24 for five years. I truly believe I've hit the jackpot with this woman, so I intend to propose to her on our upcoming anniversary date, which I've shared with my parents. I guess this triggered my mother to hire a private investigator, without consulting me, to perform a background check on my girlfriend. She shared the results with our entire family. My girlfriend's told me a lot about her past, some of the adversities she's faced, poverty, family crisis, homelessness. So I wasn't really shocked when it came up that both she and her family were involved in criminal stuff. I am happy to look past it. My girlfriend is gentle and sweet, and on the way to graduating from medical school, she's devoted to helping people, disadvantaged in particular. Whatever happened in her past doesn't at all reflect her present day character. But my mom's convinced herself, my girl is only with me for money, and not only refuses to give me the family ring, but is adamant I should leave her. My parents and siblings have all expressed that she's no longer welcome at any family events. I don't know how to approach a conversation with her about this, especially because I'd have to admit I went along with violating her privacy. I chose to review the results of the private investigator. I also don't know how to persuade my family to just relax and accept her. Bro, you've got to check your mom and set up boundaries. She has absolutely no respect for you or your life. Why is this okay with you? Access to you and your life is a privilege. You're a grown-up man. That's a major violation. If I were the girlfriend, I'd be more concerned about your handling of this and potentially dating someone afraid to stand up to a toxic mom. There's nothing to convince anyone of, as it's your life. They can participate or they can get out. LOL, siblings have an opinion. Absolutely. This was six kinds of not okay. Mom doesn't get to interfere in her adult son's relationships like this. She hired someone to dig up dirt on someone her child loves? That should be a non-starter. OP, you're 26. Your family has nothing to do with whoever you want to date. If I were you, I completely cut ties with them for what they did. They won't give you the ring? Fine. Buy yourself one. I'm sure your girlfriend should wear a new ring picked by you rather than a family's ring who doesn't accept her due to her past. Yeah, I agree. The poor girl got in legal trouble as a little kid. However, she has somehow risen above that background to graduate med school. She has more strength of character in her little finger than some of your family have in their entire bodies. She deserves a ring that symbolizes your love for her and your life together, not something from your mother who has no respect for her. Wow, I'm so sorry this is happening to you. I'm assuming your family is very sheltered and privileged if they refuse to accept the person your girlfriend is now. Have they never made mistakes? Never done anything wrong at all? I highly doubt that. Ultimate petty move. Hire a private investigator to investigate your family. Update. My mother commissioned a private investigator to perform a background check on my girlfriend. Hopefully if someone in the future has a similar dilemma, this can be useful. I set my girlfriend down and asked her to listen to everything I had to say before commenting. She was visibly panicked, but relieved when I told her that I don't judge the past and support her. I let her know the situation in its entirety and apologized for looking through the results. She forgave me and didn't really care that I did that at all. However, as predicted, she was rightfully hurt by my family's actions, so I suggested we go no contact with them and she agreed. I've since called slash emailed to inform them of this. My parents took it horribly, but I'm set on this decision. That night we also had a long chat about her history and she was happy to get it off her chest. The family ring came up too and she told me that she'd be happy even without one. But of course that's not an option. As advised, she'll pick one she likes, which will become our new family ring. Anyways, the best part of this update, it was spontaneous but I don't think the moment could have been any more perfect for getting down on that knee, hold her hands and ask her to marry me. Received a very enthusiastic yes, lol. The proposal on the balcony without a ring and set in the early AMs was far from traditional, but felt incredibly intimate and romantic, just the two of us alone. I really can't tell you guys how ecstatic I am and looking forward to the future with my wonderful fiance. Thanks again, everyone. Take care. I, teen male, live with my mom. 
My sister, 24, also lives here, and recently her wife, 29, moved in with her. So all of us live under the same roof. The bathroom is right next to my bedroom, as in I have to pass it if I want to get to the stairs or any other room upstairs. When my mom is home, my sister-in-law closes and locks the bathroom door like a normal person. But when my mom is at work, sister works from home, sister-in-law doesn't work, I'm homeschooled. Sister-in-law leaves the bathroom door open, sometimes just a crack, but sometimes it's wide open. And with the way the bathroom is set up, I can still see the toilet clearly, even if it's only open a crack. This is honestly just a small part of me feeling like they don't notice me. She walks around in her underwear, which makes me uncomfortable. If they hear me leave my room at night, if my mom isn't home, sister-in-law will loudly complain that there must be a rat walking around, even though it's clearly me. I feel like I'm an unwelcome guest in their house, which feels so unfair because this is my family's house that she just moved into. But anyway, I'm ranting. Here's the idiot part. I wanted to leave my room to make lunch, but she was in the bathroom. So, of course, the door is open an inch or two wide. At this point, I was really fed up with it. So I took my phone and pretended to look at the screen like I was distracted. Then I slammed the door open and barged into the bathroom. She looked shocked, and I pretended it was an accident. But I said, maybe if you didn't leave the door open like a darn animal, that wouldn't happen. She's a really sensitive, whiny person. So she got really angry at me and said again that was how she was raised. Note she hasn't even stopped doing it after this. My sister is also on her side, even though she thinks sister-in-law is overreacting a little bit. My mom isn't really taking sides. I think on the other hand, what I did was justified. But also, my problem was that I felt like she was being disrespectful and making me uncomfortable. I responded by doing the exact same thing and invading her privacy. So, am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Your sister-in-law is, though. This is just the way she does it at her house? Great! Go to your house, then. This isn't her house, and she needs to be a lot more thoughtful of other people. Don't allow this woman to stop you from doing things in your own home. Don't wait on the stairs to go back to your own room. If she's in the bathroom and has the door open, just walk right by. That's on her and not you. If she doesn't like it, well, then maybe she should shut the door. I do not understand why your mom allows this behavior in her home, though. You need to speak to your mother, repeatedly, like daily. Being harassed in your own home is not cool. Being made to feel unwelcome in your own home is not cool. Your mother's job is to protect you. It's not a matter of choosing sides. It's a matter of protecting her child from an adult living in her house. Suppose the genders were reversed and you were a girl and your sister's spouse was a man deliberately exposing themselves to you. In that case, you can bet that your mother would be protecting you. Just because you're a boy doesn't mean you don't deserve protection. I, 19 female, am five months pregnant. It was not planned at all, but my fiance, Barry, 21, and I decided to go ahead with the pregnancy after considering our options for a long time. My best friend, Theo, 20, has been nothing but supportive and helpful. Theo got into a pretty serious relationship a few months ago, but I have never met her. So I suggested we have a dinner party and invite some other friends as well. Ava, 23, seemed very sweet at first, but I noticed she turned cold towards me. I thought it was just me, but Barry asked me about it as well. I thought she may just be having a hard time surrounded by new people, so I didn't make a big deal out of it. We all sat down to have dinner, and Ava asked me how my pregnancy was going. I thanked her for asking and I said it was all right. I steered the conversation to another topic just because I didn't want to be the topic of the night. It was all right from then onwards for a while. Ava seemed to get along with everyone. I was feeling a bit tired, so I excused myself and went to get a cold drink. When I came back, my friends made sure I was okay and asked me if we should wrap up the party early and I said no. Ava commented about pregnancy being hard and I agreed with her saying it's the hardest thing ever. She then said, no offense, but why didn't you guys consider ending it while laughing? I felt like that was such an awkward thing to ask. No one really answered, but then Barry said it just wasn't something we could do. He asked everyone if they needed more drinks in an attempt to change the topic, but Ava continued. She said something along the lines of, you guys know you're ruining your life, right? <laughs>
like yikes, still laughing. So I told her a bit rudely to please not say things like that since I felt uncomfortable. She replied saying she was brutally honest and that people liked that about her. But I was thinking I just met this girl. I just couldn't deal with this for the rest of the night. So I told her to just please get out and maybe learn some manners. And I guess she didn't expect me to say it, but she did get out. Theo was angry at me. He said I was ruining him and just left with her. After a few awkward moments, our other friends supported my decision and we had a good night. Yesterday, Theo messaged me for the first time after the incident and told me that Ava was refusing to speak to him. And he said, thanks, I hope you're happy. I don't know why that specific sentence just made me feel guilty. I believe I may have been the idiot. She was a new member of the group and maybe I was overreacting and she didn't mean to insult me. Of course, Barry thinks otherwise, but he may be biased. Not the idiot. I cannot stand people who use, I'm just being honest, as an excuse to be rude and insulting to others. Ava sounds like a nasty piece of work, and you weren't wrong to kick her out. Her comment and subsequent doubling down were outrageously out of line. Theo was also completely wrong to be mad at you, and I think some distance from him might not go amiss. However, Unless he is known to do this kind of thing himself, I keep an eye on him. The fact that he doesn't appear to acknowledge how awful she was to you and that she's taking this out on him is raising a few red flags for me. I think the relationship might be toxic. Seriously, he backed her and walked out and she's refusing to talk to him? This woman sounds like a real piece of work. What did she expect him to do to avoid her giving him the silent treatment? Burn the place down on the way out or something? For someone who thinks she's likes for being brutally honest, she sure is crap at dealing with the very possible and understandable results of behaving like that around people you're meeting for the first time. Not the idiot, screw him. Anyone who can support someone who treats their best friend like that isn't a friend at all. I can't imagine the audacity to enter someone's home and tell them being pregnant is a wrong decision. I don't know how deeply you care about this Theo dude, but he sounds like the kind of guy you can do without. Or, you know, he might just agree with his girlfriend. The truth is, the vast, vast majority of people, at least in Western developed countries, will think that having a baby at 19 is a terrible idea. Unless you have a rich and or supportive family, you're setting yourself and your kid up for a hard life. My son recently started fifth grade a few weeks ago. He's an excellent student, always on top of his homework, and one of the brightest kids in his class. He made friends with a classmate before lockdown and they stayed close. Unfortunately, his friend passed away in April. He's seen a therapist since and has been doing better. However, on Tuesday, my son called me during lunchtime crying. He asked me if he could be picked up early because he didn't feel right. My son's never done this before. For one thing, he's a terrible liar and I haven't heard him this upset since he first found out what happened to his friend. He talked me through what was going on. Some kids were talking about his friend, not in a bad way, and he got very emotional and overwhelmed. It made him very sad because they would have had the same class together this year. There were about three hours left in the school day, so I picked him up. He was able to get whatever homework from his teacher. He was still upset when I picked him up, cried some more in the car. Luckily, his therapist was available for an impromptu video session when we made it home. My wife got home from work and I'd already texted her earlier about what happened. We got into an argument because she says it was irresponsible to take him out of school for that reason and I'm affecting his education. After telling her why, she still believes he should have stuck it out for the rest of the day and not use his friend's death as an excuse to miss out on class. He's been going to school every day for weeks without problems. That day in particular was bad. I'd understand my wife if it was a regular occurrence it's the first time he's ever been asked to be picked up. Frankly to me, I just don't see how missing less than a half a day once would affect him the way my wife is saying it will. She brought it up again today and I got fed up. It was already days ago and so I told her to stop overreacting about this already. The reason she thinks I'm an idiot is that I'm dismissing her concerns about him missing out that day and acting like they aren't a big deal, which honestly doesn't seem like they are. His homework was done and he still understands the material. It's hard to see why this is something she's still hung up on. 
especially since we've already agreed to make sure this doesn't become a regular thing. She's still mad. It's the silent treatment for right now. Am I the idiot? Wow, hard not the idiot. By picking your son up early and talking to him about it, you're not only confronting him during a hard time, you're also teaching him it's okay for men to show emotion sometimes and to talk through it. Your wife needs to chill out. The kid's friend just died for God's sake. Not the idiot. You're legitimizing your son's emotions. You're showing him it is okay to take a mental health break. You're also reinforcing the fact that he knows he can rely and depend on you. Half a day of the fifth grade will not make up for all the positive behaviors you're imparting. You should look up articles on emotional mistreatment. Everyone thinks the silent treatment is a pretty normal thing, but it's actually toxic behavior. Yes, the silent treatment is such childish crap. It's honestly hard to comprehend actual adults doing it. Basically, it's the adult version of throwing a tantrum in the store because you didn't get the treats you wanted. You are not the idiot, OP. And thank you for being there for your son so he knows he can trust you when he has difficult feelings. That's worth so much more than anything he can learn in one afternoon of school. I recently moved to Japan for work. When restrictions are lifted, my wife will be following me. When my wife moves here, her niece will be moving into our house. Her niece moved to Florida a few years ago, has had terrible luck with roommates, and has been bouncing around living situations. So my wife and I agreed that she can move into our place when we move out. She did live with us for a while last year, but because her schedule is vastly different than ours, she decided to move out, which is why she's waiting until my wife leaves to move back in. My son is mad that I am allowing my wife's niece to live in our house instead of him, but I have my reasons. Years ago, my now wife and I lived in China for a few years. During this time, my son was 18. He split time between my house and his mom's. Several times I was made aware that my son had parties, friends over, and drinking and using stuff while I was away. When my wife and I returned, the house was a disaster and several items were broken. Because of this, I lost trust in my son. My son is 26 now and claims that he should be forgiven for his past mistakes and given another chance since he's older. However, based on his actions, I still think he's too immature to be allowed to live in my house because he has really done nothing to prove he's grown up over the years. Am I the idiot for still not trusting my son to live in my house and to allow my wife's niece to move in instead? You are the idiot. Seriously, there is a big difference between a 25-year-old and 18. Also, you were holding over his head for eight years, almost a decade, something he did when he was a kid. I assume you never threw a party or similar when you were a kid. It's time to forgive and move on but he sees it as still being punished and possibly favoritism towards the wife's side of the family. So you might need to be prepared to lose your son out of your life after this. Not the idiot. Is this a real question? Are you really debating this one? You're outright saying he hasn't changed since he was a degenerate who used your house as his party spot. Why would you even question it? If he's being belligerent and indignant about it, just tell him the straight truth. Once he proves he's changed for the better, then you'll trust him again. Not the idiot. Actions have consequences, and as a result of his actions, he needs to find alternative accommodation. His justification that he's older and should be forgiven and given another chance is fine. However, he's shown no remorse from the sounds of it.